let's go ahead and begin. Um, uh, let me ask for God's uh, guidance and uh, his presence with us today, and then we'll begin. Join me as I pray. Gracious, loving Father, we just thank you that uh, we have this privilege of uh, being able to come together. And this evening, as we uh, discuss and talk about another aspect of our spiritual lives, our Christian lives, we want, Lord, your guidance and help. Uh, we want you to open our minds and uh, have the have the courage to accept what uh, you have preserved for us in the scriptures. Uh, sometimes uh, what we hear, what we learn from the scriptures can be uncomfortable uh, because we live in a world that has fallen and uh, we continue to struggle with uh, uh, all kinds of uh, spiritual matters. So help us, Lord, and may the Holy Spirit be with us and and guide us into all truth. We commit the study into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, thank you again. Uh, let me just, uh, yeah, I'm glad Suri Murthy was able to come back. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, we should be expecting Franklin Poppins to join us because he wanted to share something about faith and reason today. So, <laughs> so we'll hopefully have him connect. But uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, what prompted me on this particular subject was the recent uh, tragedy that took place in North India. You might have heard of this uh, little city called Hathras. I don't know where it is. I think, is it in Haryana or um, uh, Punjab? Uh, UP, UP, UP. Yes, that's correct. It's in UP. And the, uh, the uh, sad situation is this particular godman who was conducting a satsang, as they say, uh, a gathering. He was given permission to have 80,000 people. Join, I mean to say, uh, be co congregate, but he had something like two lakhs people jo join in the two hundred thousand people join. So, unfortunately, uh, at one particular point in time, uh, we, I mean, we don't know what really happened, but there was a stampede, and unfortunately, over a hundred and twenty people lost their lives. Most of them, women and children. Uh, I was, I mean, it's a reading the reports. They are still conducting the, uh, you know, the inquiry. Uh, they were saying that some of them were trying to get a glimpse of him. And as he was leaving, they were trying to gather the earth under his feet. In other words, where he walked, they were trying to gather the earth because that was supposedly... Uh, you know, what do you say, sacred earth or whatever, you know, I, I, I can't understand where the reason is. But uh, uh, I was reading an article in uh, one of our newspapers and uh, an author that I respect quite well uh, in the sense that uh, uh, he had a take on it and he went on to talk about Christianity. I'd like you to watch this uh, little article that uh, I read. Let me bring up my screen and let me share with you uh, this particular article. All right. Um, so this is the uh, title of my message today. Does the Bible encourage blind or reasoned faith? Blind faith or reasoned faith? And let me just uh, make this a little bigger. Right. There you are. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah? All of you can hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't see anyone for some reason. Um, but that's okay. So uh, the... the um, uh, this is the uh, article that uh, I'm taking an excerpt from. Uh, this author is Devdath Patnayak, uh, a mythologist, as he calls himself, uh, and lives in Mumbai. He says, all gurus or babas work on our emotions, not logic. Only some, only some abuse their power and collapse. Some get institutionalized over generations as gods and prophets. And they do not flourish in India alone. And this is where he 
has a take on uh, Christianity. It says, in America, they are called the Charismatics, who tell you how the Holy Spirit works, miracles in human lives. Blind will see, lame will walk, poor will be prosperous. They are so powerful that they now fund politicians who ensure their voice shapes legislation and they receive tax benefits and protection from law. They have convinced Americans that Jesus wants them to carry guns, hate homosexuals, and deny women reproductive rights. Okay. Let me stop there for a moment and let me just get my... I'm trying to work out my... All right. Okay. Stop share. All right. Just give me a moment. I'm my screen is acting up for some reason. Okay. Recording in progress. Ah. Uh, uh, can you still Can hear? You? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't know why. Uh, for some reason. Can hear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just one moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a bit of a problem with my screen. I, I, I'm. I hope. Uh, yeah. I can see you all now. I hope you can hear me. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, obviously, this man, Dev Duck. Patnayak, um, uh, uh, you know, also talks about how logic is never used. Emotions rule the roost and, and people only, uh, what you call it, uh, respond by emotion and they don't reason, right? Uh, and that is why he says sometimes uh, people become blind in their faith and do not take any reason into account. So, um, what about the Christian faith? I mean, here is this man talking about, and I think obviously he is right in one, in some sense, uh, some of the things he says may be far-fetched, but uh, uh, we do know that God heals and we believe in healing. But on the other hand, there are people who take advantage of uh, uh, the teaching on healing and uh, make people blind with some of the things that they talk about, right? So question is, does God expect us to use reason or does he just want us to have blind faith? And I'm going to go through a number of scriptures. So it's really going to be a Bible study today. So, um, uh, 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 you know, and, and uh, we will see very clearly how the Bible promotes and encourages for us to use our minds. And the question we have to ask first is, yeah. why would God create us with reason? the ability to reason, and then expect for us not to use it. So that is a, a question that we have to, uh, you know, first consider. He, he has made us and created us with a, uh, uh, an ability to reason. So uh, uh, look at, let, let's look at some statements that uh, show uh, very clearly that the Bible teaches reason. Now, I'm going to try again and share my screen. And let me see if this time it works. Uh, let me just see. Um, no, I think I've got my... Um, right. No, I, I'm having a problem with my uh, PowerPoint. So I'll just leave that alone. Let me just read it to you. I'm going to read from John chapter 20. Uh, verse 30 onwards, and this is John, the, the Gospel of John, and here he writes about Jesus. He says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name, right? So very clearly, John says uh, that he records so many of these miracles. And for what reason? Because he wants us to believe 
with evidence. In other words, he's presenting the evidence for Jesus uh, and who Jesus was through the miracles. Jesus proved he was much more than, you know, just being a human being. He was fully human, but he was also God. And he wants to present an evidence. And obviously, when uh, an evidence is presented, we need to recognize that the evidence requires for us to think about it, to reason about it. In the um, Peter, the apostle, in his epistle, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, he says, For we did not follow cleverly devised stories or myths when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter very clearly says the, 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 the fact about Jesus is not a myth. It's not a cleverly devised stories like some people like to believe today, that Jesus was just a figment of their imagination. Some people like to believe Jesus was not even uh, a historical figure. They deny the historicity of Jesus. But Peter says we were eyewitnesses. He wants us to recognize it is not a myth. Uh, again, in John chapter 14, the gospel of John 14, verse 11, Jesus himself says something where he wants us to use reason. He says in verse 11, believe me when I say that I am in the father and the father is in me or notice then he carries on at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Here is Jesus himself presenting to us evidence and obviously we had seen what he was doing and he was saying that is the evidence that I am in the father in other words I came from the father and uh, he is doing only because he is from the father in other words uh, proclaiming that he was the messiah so Jesus himself was appealing to evidence of the works that he had done he wants us to consider uh, that as proof that he is uh, the Messiah. Okay, so uh, these scriptures very clearly prove, and obviously there are many more, uh, you know, I, I, I'll stop there. I'll, I'll bring up some other scriptures, but I want to now go to the point where some people use certain scriptures to say that we must have blind faith. Uh, and one of those scriptures is found again in the Gospel of John. And you remember the story of uh, Thomas uh, and John 20. Thomas finds it hard to believe that Jesus is resurrected. He wants absolute proof. And let us pick up that uh, scripture and, and uh, see what he has to say. Then Jesus told him, you remember John, Thomas comes to him and says, unless I touch him, I cannot believe. And then Jesus says, go ahead and touch me. Right. And then John, if you remember the uh, passage, he falls on his feet and says, my Lord and my God. Right. Uh, and then what does Jesus respond? Jesus says in verse 29, gospel of John chapter 20, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Some people say, see, Jesus is saying, the rest of them should have just blind faith. Uh, he is showing that all we have to have is blind faith. We don't see, yet we believe. Now, that is not what it means. Uh, if I can just offer my explanation of that. It's very interesting. When Thomas needs evidence, he wants to touch Jesus. Jesus actually provides it. So Jesus is not against evidence. He's not saying that we should believe without evidence. Thomas himself was struggling and Jesus provided the evidence. <laughs> he asked him to touch him, right? Uh, so it shows Jesus is supporting an evidenced, evidence based belief. Now, when Jesus says, Those who have not, you know, <coughs> blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, what does he mean by that? What Jesus is saying is that those who have not seen yet have have the evidence of eyewitnesses, John himself. Because John himself says that uh, the works of Jesus that are recorded in my book are evidence of you know, who Jesus was. 
So what Jesus is actually saying is, people may have not seen him, right? Uh, but they believe based on the evidence of the eyewitnesses, right? So he is not saying believe without evidence. He is saying believe because you already have the evidence, right? So that is uh, how we can understand that scripture. Uh, another scripture that is used to show that apparently the Bible, um, you know, promotes blind faith is Hebrews chapter chapter eleven, and that is, uh, if you remember the uh, the way faith is explained or defined. Hebrews chapter eleven, I think it is verse uh, one or two. I think it is. Uh, where it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right. So what some people say is the following. Hope for things not seen. In other words, blind faith. You hope for things that you cannot see. So they, they believe that that is promoting blind faith. A better translation of that, of that verse, Hebrews chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 1 and 2, I think it is. Uh, the better translation is goes like this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, right? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. In other words, before we explain that, you know, the author of Hebrews is writing immediately after informing the members uh, the, the audience that uh, they are going to go through persecution. So he was encouraging them that in the face of persecution and sufferings and tribulations, the author is exhorting them to remain faithful. The question is why? Why remain faithful in spite of all the persecutions and the sufferings one goes through? Because he says, you have the assurance you have the substance of faith. You have the evidence of the assurance and the substance of faith. What is the assurance of faith? What is the substance of faith? Now, uh, I would like to believe that assurance or substance is Jesus Christ. That is the substance of our faith, right? And we know Jesus uh, existed and he proved to be true to his word. He was resurrected from the dead. And so our assurance and our substance of hope is Jesus Christ. The fact that he will redeem us just as he was redeemed from the grave. So what the author is helping us understand, the way I would like to explain it is, Jesus is the evidence of things not yet seen. Jesus is the evidence of things not yet seen. So when it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, it is Jesus who is the substance that gives us the hope, though we are not able to see it. He is the evidence of the wonderful future that we can hope for because uh, he has proved to be the true Messiah. So in other words, Trust Jesus and remain in the faith. Though you go through difficulties and problems and tribulations and sufferings, remain faithful because we have the substance of our faith, our hope, which is Jesus Christ himself. All right. Having said that, uh, you know, the very word faith, uh, you know, in the Greek and Latin is very interesting. Uh, I just wanted to very briefly mention you know, the the word faith in Greek is uh, uh, pistis, I think it is. I, 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 you know, difficult to pronounce it exactly. But uh, in the Greek, uh, the word pistis means conviction of the truth. Right? Conviction of the truth. If you expand that, you begin to see what it means is that you're convicted that something is true. Why? Why do you get convicted that something is true? Because you have some kind of evidence. So faith is not blind. Right? The very word faith means you have some evidence 
to substantiate your faith, right? So uh, the Bible once again clearly shows that faith is not blind and we are not called to have blind faith. In the, in the Latin, faith is the word fide, fide, which means trust, trust. Now, when, when do you trust something or someone? You only trust when you have a reason to do so. Notice I word, use the word reason. Why do you trust? Because you have a reason to trust. So you have reason, a way to have trust. So even there, the word fide, which means faith, is helping us to recognize that you have used your reason. You have used your reason. So faith, uh, according to Sean McDowell, one of our uh, you know uh, very popular presenters on YouTube, uh, he is a theologian. Uh, he says the following, faith is not belief in spite of the evidence, but belief in light of the evidence, right? Maybe I should repeat that. Faith is not belief in spite of the evidence, but belief in light of the evidence. There is some evidence. So, uh, once again, I uh, you know I just picked up those few verses to show that the Bible and Jesus Himself very clearly promotes reason, and He wants us to have faith because uh, we can have the evidence of what we believe in. We have an evidence, and that is uh, in Jesus himself. I want to come back to that original story I started the study with, the Hathras story about the, the tragedy that took place. Uh, unfortunately, there are those so-called gurus, uh, Bole Babas, as they call them here in India, uh, Godmen, who promote blind faith, right? Uh, they use emotions to promote or fool people, manipulate people into having some kind of faith in themselves. <laughs> you see, notice it is not on God, but in themselves. And that is very unfortunate, right? That is blind faith. When uh, a, a, you know, a, uh, a Godman or some preacher asked people to believe in themselves because of using and manipulating the emotions of people without using any evidence. And that is very unfortunate. And that is what has been happening uh, here in India and all over the world. And in that light, I would like to say that once again, the Bible comes back very powerfully to tell us, do not believe without your reason. Do not suspend your reason when even preachers come and tell you about the good things or what they can deliver you from. Uh, the Bible once again uh, warns us. In fact, uh, through the Apostle John, he says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. So the Bible warns us that there are going to be Godmen and manipulators and false preachers who will use and fool you, use your emotions, suspend your reason and want you to believe and, of course, empty your purses. And that is, a, uh, that is what they're after, ultimately. Uh, <laughs> you know, apparently this particular, the, the, the news report said this particular Godman who... Uh, in North India, drives around in, in many, not one or two, but many luxury cars. Uh, and he was apparently an ordinary policeman. Uh, and he gave up his, uh, uh, you know, uh, work as a policeman and became a godman. And now he can drive luxury cars. Now, you know, you, you, there itself you wonder, what is this uh, whole thing? Now, not that, you know, it's necessarily wrong to drive a luxury car, but drive many luxury cars. Now, that brings a big question mark. But I want to just end by bringing these, uh, this aspect that there is blind faith, that the people give themselves over to blind faith. And the Bible says, 
don't do it. I just want to go through a few scriptures to help us understand that we are living in an age where there will be a tremendous temptation to believe some who come and promise the moon. And we have to be careful and notice what the Bible says. And I'm reading from Matthew 24, verse 24, the very words of Jesus. He said, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Very sobering words from Jesus. Notice he says, false messiahs. Who's a messiah? A messiah is one who promises to deliver. Right? That's why we call him a messiah. A messiah is one who promises to deliver you. And so, unfortunately, there will be false messiahs who will even perform great signs and wonders. But what is the goal of it? To deceive. Unfortunately, sometimes even the elect falls for it. And we are being warned that do not suspend your reason. Do not suspend your thinking. You were given your thinking for a reason. <clears throat> And that is to use it and not to go into blind belief. The Apostle Paul is another one who brings very strong message about false prophets. In uh, writing to Timothy, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning from verse 3, he says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers uh, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from truth and turn aside to myths. How? And isn't that interesting? Look at the dynamics. They turn, us, turn away from truth, which is evidence-based. Truth is evidence-based. And they will turn aside to myths where very clearly it says, they have suspended their thinking power. They, are, they have suspended their reason. Right? Uh, they are do not want to exercise caution. They do not want to test. They just want to believe because they are tempted by the desires that are being promoted by these so-called false teachers. Let me look at one more scripture. And in Acts chapter 20, Reading, in, reading from verse 28, Acts 20, verse 28, it says, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. This is talking to leaders, the leadership of the church, right? Uh, and he goes on to say, be, be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought, or rather, which he bought with his own blood. Verse 29 says, I know that after I leave, I think this, this is the Apostle Paul talking, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. I mean, these are very sobering warnings. It's right there in the Bible telling us, warning us to be careful. Because such a phenomenon will take place. False teachers and prophets and messiahs will come. And they will ask you not to think. They will say, just believe me what I say. And then you will be fine. Uh, you will have palatial buildings and money and all of that. And they promise the whole lot. And that is what one person called Jim Jones did. And many of you probably, I'm sure, will recognize the name Jim Jones. Who took away... You know, his yeah. entire congregation to a Caribbean island and made them drink Kool-Aid, which, of course, uh, put them all to sleep for, for eternity. Uh, <laughs> very sad. But that is the extent of deception that exists in the world today. And it's very unfortunate that is a phenomenon that is going around. And we have to be careful. The Bible tells us to be careful not to suspend reason. Your faith must have must be evidence based and we have the evidence and the greatest evidence we have is Jesus Christ himself his historicity is proved his resurrection has been proved he indeed is the messiah so uh, reason 
is very important because reason helps us to discern, right? And the Bible says we must have a discerning attitude, a discerning spirit. Discernment helps us to know deception from truth. It is discernment that helps us to uh, separate, you know, deception from truth. And ultimately, we have the Holy Spirit that guides us. And anytime we have doubts, we pray to the Holy Spirit and ask him to guide us into truth. And he will. All right. I'm going to stop there. Uh, like to get some of your thoughts, comments. Uh, is there something you'd like to add to what I said? Uh, reason and faith. Uh, yes, Surimuti, go ahead. Please unmute. You you said Jesus is the substance of the faith. Uh, say that again, Surimuti. Jesus is the substance of our faith. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But. Why not we replace Jesus, the word Jesus, by our YHWH? <laughs> okay. uh, Yahweh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, Yahweh. Why, why rest it only to Jesus? Okay, what, what about Yeshua? Hmm. No. No. Uh, that OHWH. Yeah. I think that includes Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I is something know. more than Jesus. Okay. Uh, so your point is that, uh, I mean, uh, are you, um, do you have a problem with the name Jesus? No. I'm not sure about no. that. I want to say. Yeah. Uh, God. Okay. God the Father, God the Son. That is the substance of our faith. Not only Jesus. Okay. Okay. Well, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, when we say God, we, uh, you know, we understand and know He is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, yeah. I mean, point taken. Yes, I mean, no problem. Anil, go ahead. Well, uh, expanding on what Sri has said, uh, why probably uh, is Jesus is the substance of our faith is because Jesus manifested himself as a human. And people saw him, he preached, and all those kind of things. Whereas nobody has seen, as he himself said, God or the Holy Spirit. So, whereas, yes, Yahweh includes all three, but probably Jesus, because he was manifested and people saw him and all those things. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I think that's a very good point. Uh, I I would think that you know, I mean, uh, uh, he is the one the disciples saw. Uh, mm -hmm. He is the one uh, Thomas touched, <clears throat> and so he indeed became the very point of the substance of faith. Right. I mean, yes, that's a good point. I I, I think. Uh, that's well said. <laughs> yes, Bertie, go ahead. Yes, even uh, I would want to uh, uh, want to uh, what to call commend uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Nagar uh, and well said, Mr. Nagar. Yeah, it is through Jesus Christ that we. In fact, is the true manifestation, you know, in human, in flesh and blood, in Christ. As he rightly said, the triune God was manifested in Jesus Christ as a human being. He lived life without sin. That's the evidence of faith. We have to believe the light of the evidence given there in the Bible of eyewitnesses. And the, uh, and the proof of the pudding is in its eating. The proof of the pudding is <laughs> the famous English saying, proof of the pudding is in its eating. We have to look to Jesus Christ to be uh, what we can possibly be or we can possibly, you know, not possibly. It is possible in Christ Jesus and no other way. Uh, as we uh, as we uh, see, uh, read the scriptures, Christ is the substance. He is the light of the substance. Yes. And we clearly mentioned yes. that I have come as a light into the world. I think uh, in 
in John, I think it is. Uh, Ms. Zakara, I think it's in John. Uh, I've come as a light into the world. Those who follow me should not continue in darkness, but have the light of life. And yes, the Father thank you. Said, the Father sent me, and the Father indwells yeah. in me. I dwell in the Father. Yeah. All, all those things, you know. It is we have to look to the to the Lord, uh, and receive, <laughs> yeah. uh, receive the true Christ in our hearts and true Spirit in our hearts. Yeah. Right. To, thank you, thank you, Bertie. I think you you expanded on it quite well. And but uh, Suri Murthy, I mean, I was just thinking, uh, you know, I mean, maybe one of these days we'll do a study. Uh, this uh, Yahweh and, uh, you know, Jesus and Yeshua. And there is a lot of uh, talk about these things going on. And there are some people uh, who get offended when we use the word Jesus for some reason. Uh, and they say, no, you should only use the word Yeshua. Uh, and so uh, maybe we'll do a study on that one of these days. Of course, that is getting into the Hebrew and all of that stuff, which I, yeah. I am not very good at. But nevertheless, uh, maybe we'll do a study on that. Well, there's Adonai, there's Elohim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, so, yeah. So Sorry, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just like Anil was saying, you know, this God man, you know, Jesus, he stood before Pilate, remember? And he, when he was questioning him, he's, no, he was asked about, you know, are you a king? You say rightly, I'm a king. And he said, everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. This is Jesus telling Pilate. And what did Pilate say? What is truth? You know, he, he couldn't understand. There's no basic understanding of truth in the world. And like you said, there are two spirits which we are influenced by. The spirit in us, which is the Holy Spirit, is greater than he used in the world. That's what, you know, the gospel says. Yeah. That, and that is the evil spirit. So we are led by that. And uh, our minds are controlled by that. Yeah. And it's up to us to sift it out. You know, it's it's not an easy thing to just, uh, you know, walk by faith. God is truth. Jesus is truth. The word is truth. That that has to come to us by revelation. So. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, uh, uh, revelation comes into our mind where we process and then we are able to discern and recognize the spirit. <laughs> Either it is the false spirit or the true spirit. And interesting, since you mentioned about that, you know, the spirit in the world, you know, the Bible says that the the, the, the demons uh, know the true God and yet yeah. they don't believe, right? Yeah. In other words, you can have evidence and yet you rejected evidence. And unfortunately, even today, I think there are people who have evidence of what is truth, if you know, if you can use that word, uh, and yet they will not want to believe. And I think uh, in many ways, sometimes, you know, Jesus is, you know, uh, so easily, or I meant to say, well, I mean, we, you, do, you do need conviction of the Holy Spirit or revelation. But some people know Jesus is, is the Messiah, and yet they reject him. Sometimes I, 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 I wonder about that. You know, they, they, reason and know the evidence but yet they don't accept they don't uh, they reject the evidence that's all of the jews the whole all the jews you know they are read and read and read and they have no clue about the truth i mean uh, you know so much in the old testament talks about jesus but they don't uh, you know accept that isn't right. that strange yes i mean the evidence is the old testament and yet they reject that bertie you yeah. had a thought yeah for how much longer can they do that? <laughs> How much longer a judgment is coming, you know? <laughs> then, uh, then, you know, yeah, Susie, then it's too late. <laughs> yes, Bertie, Bertie, do you know that the chapter of Isaiah 53, which talks yes. entirely about Jesus, really? the Jews are not allowed to read that chapter. Right. <laughs> I see, yeah. Even John mentions, you know, there are so many things that Jesus, we talk about the evidence of the word of God, the scriptures, okay, eyewitnesses, and we believe it. And as as you know, miracles have taken place in our individual lives, right? God has, you know, saved us from, you know, in a near-death situation or provided a need, you know, financial or whatever else, you know, a need. 
we, that's why I call it the proof of the pudding is in its eating, you know. Uh, we believe in Jesus Christ and we are happier for that uh, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, those not knowing and as we say, those who are trying to, you know, block their mind or block themselves, you know, they say you know, they, they, they did not love the truth to be saved. Yeah. yeah. See, right. hence, uh, you know, uh, there are many preachers say if that's what they want, if they want to live life separate from God, God has given us a free will, given us, uh, you know, uh, uh, given us an ability to, as you say, discernment and, uh, you know, God right. God can bring them to. But God, as we say, God gives them, you know, what, they, uh, what they're desiring for themselves. You know, they're so much uh, wanting, caught up with the falseness, falsehood and you know, deception and lies. Uh, but even I sometimes wonder, oh, how come they're not coming to the knowledge of the truth? Uh, but they, they they desire that, and God will give it to them. Uh, you know, separation forever. You know, uh, yeah. God, yeah. Right. Surumurthy, you had a thought. Yes, in response to what Susie said, hmm. the Jews read the Tanakh, the Old Testament, several times. Still, they do not accept Jesus. So in response to that, I am requesting you, not Susie. I'm requesting you uh, yeah. to in to inform me in the some some twenty plain references in the old testament. Which speaks clearly about Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's uh, plenty there. There's a whole study on that. Yeah. And that is my request. Okay. <laughs> okay. Remember, remember all the, the earlier, all the apostles, the starting, the beginning. You church. Sorry. What, pre yeah. You understood my question, no? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, what you're saying is that. Uh, uh, to bring out the references yeah. where yeah. Jesus, the, the Jews, uh, there is the millions of Jews, yeah, they are re reading the same Old Testament, mm. which they call it Tanakh, and still they do not believe in Jesus Christ. So there is a, so my my uh, my question is that I would like to see some twenty clear references from the Old Testament mm. in English. In English. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, you can you can start with Genesis, yeah. You can start with Genesis and go on. <laughs> right. Speak about the clearly about uh, Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. So Obviously but, we but no, but the Old Testament mentioned the name Jesus. There are right. many references to Jesus. Right. Yeah. More than, yeah. Just like many people say that Jesus never claimed himself to be God. He never said I am God. <laughs> but of course, there are other ways where he he's proved his deity. So this is, I think, one of those things. Right. Oh, his very I'm, name, I'm, his what name. I'm asking is... His very name is I Am. His <laughs> name is I Am. And that is there all through the scriptures. My, my question is, you give me 20 clear references from the Old Testament. We speak okay. clearly, okay, about, start. clearly about... Okay, this is okay. Right. okay. Start uh, with Genesis. You, you can't do it here, yeah. but you may me you may give it me in the in a written form in WhatsApp or somewhere. Okay, we start can, with Genesis. Hey, Surya Murthy. Surya Murthy <laughs> says, "Listen, Susie has already Genesis. got the twenty references." <laughs> we, we will not. He's saying send it to him. He's saying send it to him on WhatsApp. <laughs> we will not get into argument. What yeah. do you want to <laughs> say? <laughs> Just look like she wants to jump out of the bed and clout. Yeah. Uh, sorry, <laughs> no, she, said, she said the Jews do not believe in Jesus Christ. There is a reason for that. Yeah. yeah. Millions yeah. of Jews read the Old Testament several times. Still, they do not accept Jesus Christ. There is a reason for that. Yeah. So, yes, we know. Yes, we know. We agree. We agree. We agree. Uh, we are maybe we should do a study on that, and but I would just like to point out that Jesus himself, talking to the two disciples on the way to Emmaus, uh, he says that uh, 
he proved who he was from the scriptures, you know, from the law yeah. and the that is that is going around this uh, circle. You are taking New Testament as a basis for proving the point. I want to say you take the Old Testament alone separately. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so you you want us to take the Old Testament and show that there is a Messiah coming hmm. and that Messiah is Jesus. Is that oh, what yes. you want? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Start from the Old Testament, in, yeah. In clear phraseology. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You, you okay. can have the Bible. You can have a next the, Bible study for this. <laughs> the reason, the, I, I'm telling you, the reason is because the English translation, most of the English translations are clouded when they are translated from Hebrew. When hmm. read in Hebrew, that becomes very plain in many places. Right. Okay. All right. We'll uh, we'll take up that. But okay. yes. There's another yeah. thing I want to ask. Yeah. How do you? Yeah. I think that uh, we are blaming the Jews and the unbelievers, despite the evidence and all uh, that. Is but how, do, how do we? <laughs> how do we reconcile this with the fact that God has not called them, unless God calls, you know. John 444 and 65 all those. Uh, agreed, you agreed. God, open your mind. You 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 cannot no you may, no many no matter how many times you read the old testament or you know it's dinned in your head. You cannot both believe. Of us, both, of us, both of us are appealing to the same same old testament. Christians mm -hmm. as well as Jews. They, yeah. they read the same words. They read the same words. And still they do not agree. Mm. But Jesus himself said that, you know, even uh, they will not believe even if one rises from the dead. So <laughs> that also is there. Yeah, that is, you are using New Testament to prove that point. But do you read the Old Testament and tell me. Okay. All right. We can uh, we can take that as, a, as an assignment. Uh, we'll work on it. Uh, but coming back to reason and faith uh, and uh, uh, you know, reason is so important that science cannot be done without reason and faith. <laughs> and I think uh, Franklin wanted to share a point. Franklin, you just have a few minutes. Quickly, go ahead and share that point at this time. Okay. okay. Sir, can you can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me, sir. Okay. <clears throat> sir, uh, let me begin with an apology to Mr. Nagar. Uh, sir, uh, last time you posed a question and uh, I, I have not answered your question. Uh, I made a very bold statement saying that uh, it is not possible, science is not possible without Trinity. Mm -hmm. Science is not possible without Trinity. Sir, I, 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 will, I will explain this. Uh, maybe I need a full length sermon, a full length <laughs> presentation. So today I want to make, so please accept my apologies and give me no, some no, time. That's fine, Franklin. I'm still learning time management. So uh, today I want to make one more bold statement. Science is not possible without uh, faith, without reason. Without, science is not possible without reason. So I will club both these, sir, and I will uh, do a full-length full, full -length presentation shortly. Okay. okay? But, uh, sir, science is actually based on reason, sir. Now, when we say reason, there are three types of reason, sir. Uh, scientists uh, talk about Sir, inductive reasoning. They talk about uh, deductive reasoning. They talk about abductive reasoning. I mean, uh, we'll come back to this. Uh, but it, science is not possible without reason. That's my uh, fundamental point. And uh, thank you so much for your patience. We yeah. will uh, uh, address these two issues. Okay. I mean, uh, I think that's, that, that uh, is very uh, apparent that science cannot be done without reason. But what about faith? Science yeah. also ha needs to have faith. Yes, hundred percent correct, sir. Sir, hundred percent correct. Right. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, if you ask my opinion, sir, my opinion is, sir, uh, science and uh, reason and faith, sir, are uh, uh, what he calls it inextricably connected. Correct. You cannot separate one from the other, sir. Sir, yes. just like as we have triads in the Bible, no, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, we have uh, when we say Trinity, we mean Father, Son, and Spirit. All three are inextricably connected. You cannot delink one or you cannot separate one and you cannot um, 
and then you talk and Paul talks about sir, a, a triad uh, known as sir, hope uh, uh, hope uh, what is it sir? three things love and faith hope faith, faith and hope love, and love. Uh, love faith so, and charity yes sir so these this is a triad all three are inextricably connected they they, they you cannot separate one you cannot uh, cut cut off one and say i only believe in hope i only believe in faith <laughs> and similarly say so here now what we today we have, we have a situation sir uh, science and faith science and reason science faith and reason all three are connected similarly mm. So today's subject, na, science, faith, and reason, all three are connected, inextricably connected. Uh, we will all right. It. I we guess uh, that, yeah, that brings us. Uh, we have almost out of time. Thank you very much for joining us today, and I'm glad that uh, our discussions sort of uh, expanded itself a little bit, and we'll uh, <laughs> bring up some of these things uh, in a while. But anyway, let's end. May I request Bertram, if you would like to close in prayer for us. Thank you very much. Yes. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God <clears throat> Almighty, we just thank you so much for this time together, uh, for this Bible study on an important subject, Lord. Uh, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the light, Lord, uh, and the substance. He's the substance. He is the, we have to come to believe in the light of uh, the scripture, light of the substance, which is Jesus Christ. And Lord, when we, it is the God who draws us. Uh, the Lord says, nobody can come to me except the Father draw him and call, draw her. Uh, and uh, I will, and also that uh, God's will is that those who come to the Lord, he will in no wise cast out, but will raise them up on the last day. We thank you for this promise. Thank you for this uh, scriptures, Lord, preserve for us. That, Lord, uh, uh, that uh, you are working with us. You have drawn us uh, and reconciled us by his death, by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are saved by his life, Lord. We are given the spirit of life. He is not only the atoning sacrifice for our sins and we are made right, justified. And uh, God is the justifier. He's just and he's justified. He did in his own son, Jesus Christ, who came from the Father and returned to the Father. We have come to believe, Lord, that we are justified and now we've been sanctified and uh, we look forward to the glorification. And he's mm -hmm. not only sacrificed for mm -hmm. us, but he is the life-giving spirit. We have mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in us, Lord, mm -hmm. leading and directing and helping. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, Anil Lager, Lord, who said, Lord, Jesus Christ, Lord, is uh, the substance. Mr. Zakara, of course, uh, very well mentioned, uh, Lord, and helped us to know, Lord, that while we use reason, we have to believe in Jesus Christ, the scriptures. So we thank you for the scripture which are preserved for us and we are taught from the scriptures in the Bible study and we are we are being blessed, Lord, and growing and in the faith, which is Christ, Lord. And growing in the faith, Father, we know that we have to depend upon Jesus Christ, trusting in him and, Lord, loving him, Lord, and knowing how transformative the his uh, work is in us, Lord. And we give thanks to you, the triune God. Bless your people, Lord, and their families. Bring us all to uh, to living faith in Christ, Lord. And God says that we have to believe. He who believes in me will receive God's Holy Spirit. And those who don't believe, those who want to go their own way, God gives them many chances. But if they choose to live separately from you, Father, you give them their desires, Lord. Uh, we don't want to live separate. We want to be joined to Christ as you brought us, uh, Lord, in communion with Christ. And in Christ, we experience the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for this time together and bless your people. And Lord, uh, care, let your care and favor and goodness and mercy and protection provision be for each and every one of us. We, we Lord, we are in your service, Lord. Use us in, uh, in, uh, in Lord, in, in uh, reflecting, projecting you, Lord, and speaking your words, Lord as you desire that we are in your service, Lord. Please help us, Lord, uh, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, and in the Holy Spirit, Lord, to reach out with the gospel to others. So they also, Lord, uh, but it's all in your will, according to your, Lord, your goodness and mercy, Lord, we are drawn and we are preserved in you. Father, thank you for this time. Bless the people. We pray this prayer, Father God, in Jesus Christ's holy and blessed name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Enjoy your day. God bless you all. See you next time. Bye-bye. The president's campaign. Democrats meeting behind closed doors.